Hi everybody, naturally when costs change for a firm, we can illustrate that by shifting cost curves. But the cost curves that we shift very much depend on the type of costs that have changed. So for example, imagine there is a change in fixed costs. Good examples of that would be rent or advertising, salaries, insurance payments, interest payments on loans. If any of those costs change, there are a change in fixed costs, we only shift the average cost curve. So an increase in fixed costs, we would shift the AC curve upwards only. Whereas a reduction in fixed costs, we would shift the AC curve downwards, only the AC curve, not the marginal cost curve. And the reason why it's only the AC curve that shifts is because whenever fixed costs change, there is no change in the rate of change of total costs, i.e. there is no change in marginal costs. To make that very clear, have a look at the numbers in this little table here. All these numbers are made up. So we have units up to five, the other cost numbers, let's say we're working with thousands of pounds. So we can see that even at an output of zero, total costs are 1,000 pounds, they have to be fixed costs. Remember, fixed costs, a firm has to pay regardless of the output they're producing. So even if they're producing nothing, firms still have to pay their fixed costs. So £1,000 must be the fixed cost here. So with total cost numbers that look like that, we can work out average cost and marginal cost. Average cost in black, focus on black here, is just total cost divided by quantity. So 2 divided by 1, 2, etc. gets you 2, 3.35 and 8. But looking at marginal cost, marginal cost, we're just looking at the change of total costs is 1 to 2, 1, 2 to 4, 2, 4 to 10, 6, 10 to 20 is 10, 20 to 40 is 20, great. But now let's say that fixed costs for this business have increased from initially £1,000 to now £5,000. Focus on the numbers in green now. So we can see that fixed costs have increased to £5,000. That's an increase of £4,000 at each output level. So at each output level, let's increase TC by £4,000, getting us these green numbers over here. With these new green numbers, we can work out the new average cost numbers and the new marginal cost numbers. So remember AC dividing TC by Q. So 6 divided by 1 is 6. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 14 divided by 3, 4.67. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 44 divided by 5 is 8.8. .8. So we can see, yeah, average cost has increased, yes. But look at marginal cost. Look at the change in total cost. 5 to 6 is 1. 6 to 8 is 2. 8 to 14 is 6. 14 to 24 is 10. 24 to 44 is 20. Marginal cost has not changed at all. So we can see a change in fixed costs does not change the rate of change of total cost, i.e. it does not change marginal cost. So all we do is shift the average cost curve. In this case, it's been an increase in fixed costs, so we're going to be shifting the AC curve upwards, and it looks like this diagrammatically. So we have the original AC curve, we simply shift it up to AC2. Still, the lowest point on AC has got to cut marginal cost. So something like this, call that AC2. And you'll see that not much has changed on this diagram. Because we've only shifted AC, the profit maximization point remains where MC equals MR in the same place, giving us Q1. We read the price at the same point on the AR curve, giving us P1. So price and quantity hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is the level of profit being made. So before with AC1, the level of profit being made at profit max Q1 was the difference between AR point A and AC point B. That was the profit per unit multiplied by Q1. You got the box of profit P1 A, B, C1. But now with a higher average cost at the profit max point of Q1, AR remains at A, but the new average cost level is over here. Let's call this point C2, that's a new cost level, and here we'll label that D. So we can see that average revenue is A, average cost is D. So it's still super normal profit, revenue greater than cost, but it's a much lower level. Multiply that profit margin, that profit per unit, by all of Q1, you get the super normal profit box in total of P1 AD C2, compared to P1AB C1 before, it's a lower profit level. So in this case, an increase in fixed costs. Well, price stays the same. Whether fixed costs rise or fall, price will not change. Quantity remains the same, but profit changes. In this case, with a rise in fixed costs, profit falls. If fixed costs go down, profit will increase. That's the only change you will see on this diagram. Great, for a change in fixed costs, what about a change in variable costs? 
Good examples of variable costs would be transport costs, raw material costs, utility bills, wages. When there is a change in variable costs, we shift the AC curve, but also we shift the MC curve. And that's because with a change in variable costs, there is a change in the rate of change of total cost, i.e. marginal cost is affected. To make that point very clear, we can look at this table of data, exactly the same starting point with data as we did before in black, the same numbers. Uh, but now let's say that variable costs have increased. So remember that variable costs are costs that rise when output increases. So now there has been an increase in variable costs. Uh, the numbers in green are higher than they were before, indicating a rise in variable costs. And with these new numbers, these new total cost numbers, we can work out average cost and marginal cost. So to work out average cost, we just take TC2 and we divide it by quantity. So five divided by one is five, eight divided by two is four, 15 divided by three is five, 28 divided by four is seven, 55 divided by five is 11. So we can see, look, average cost is now higher than it was before. We're gonna be shifting this curve upwards, but look at marginal cost. So to work out marginal cost, simply look at the change in TC. So from one to five is four, five to eight is three, eight to 15 is seven, 15 to 28 is 13, 28 to 55 is 27. And compared to marginal cost prior, these are higher marginal cost numbers. So it's clear that the rate of change of total cost is affected when there is a change in variable costs. And that's why you shift not just AC, but MC in this situation as well. With a rise in variable costs, we're gonna be shifting average cost and marginal cost upwards. If variable costs were to decrease, you'd be shifting AC and MC downwards. So in this situation, it's an AC MC shift up. Here's how it would look diagrammatically. So start by shifting your AC curve, just shift it up at any level is absolutely fine. So something like that would work nicely. You need to shift your new marginal cost curve upwards as well, still cutting AC at its lowest point. So something like that would be perfect. Let's call that MC2. And now there is a lot of change on this diagram. With the shift of MC, there is gonna be a new profit max point. So our MC2 equals MR is over there. Let's call that quantity Q2. We still need to read the price of the AR curve. So go up, 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 up to get the new price, call it P2. So we can see that with a rise in AC and MC, there is a reduction in quantity and there is an increase in price, but we can also show a reduction in profit. So beforehand with MC1 and AC1, uh, AR was at A, AC was at B. So super normal profit was being made per unit of A to B. Multiply that by Q1, we got a super normal profit box of P1 a, B, C1. But now we can see it. The profit max quantity of Q2, AR is over here. Let's call that D, whereas AC is over here, right? So D is AR, E is AC. AR is still greater than AC. So there is still super normal profit being made per unit of the difference between D and E. Multiply that vertical distance by all of Q2. If we call this point here C2, we then have the new box of super normal profit which is the box B, P2, D, E, C2, which is clearly a lower level of profit than before. And that makes a lot of sense, right? When we're shifting AC and MC, it's equivalent to a supply shift left, where we expect higher prices, lower quantity and lower profit. That's exactly what we're showing here. So with an increase in variable costs, price goes up, quantity goes down, profit goes down. It's the exact opposite if variable costs decrease. Price will reduce, quantity will be driven up and profit will increase. So there you have it, guys. That's how you shift cost curves, very much dependent on the type of costs that have changed. Be comfortable doing this, practice drawing these diagrams yourself, and we're good to go. Let's do the same for revenue curve shifts in the next video. See you then. Thanks for watching.